Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. I'm your host, Janet Pilcher. Thanks for having a desire to be your best at work and help your organization achieve success. This podcast is all about actions we can take to improve workplace culture and achieve results. And they're all aligned to our nine principles for organizational excellence. Joining us on our show today is one of our partners doing tremendous work on the West Coast, Tulare County Superintendent of Schools, Tim Heyer. Larry County Office of Education serves over 100,000 students across 43 districts, charter schools, and includes the College of Sequoia with high quality support services and programs for students to expand their learning beyond the classroom. Tim was elected as superintendent of schools starting in November of 2018, ending a 28-year streak under the same superintendent leading the county office. Prior to its current role, Tim was the superintendent of Exeter Unified School District since 2012 and was the superintendent for Woodlake Unified School District for five years. He successfully spearheaded efforts in both communities to unify their separate elementary and high school districts. Recently, Tim and his team rolled out their values to their entire county office organization, and he's joining me today to discuss their work. Uh, Welcome, Tim, to our show today. So glad to have you. Well, thank you for having me. Sounds good. So let's start with the first question, which I love. I love this question to and to ask anybody: Why in the world would you decide to run for an office as a as an elected superintendent or an elected official? Well, to be completely honest, I, I really have no idea what I was getting into in, in terms of the <laughs> election process. But uh, I think the answer to that really is rooted in the decision I made twenty four years ago to choose education as a profession. And and it's about making a difference for kids. Started out as a coach and a 4-H advisor. And and then that moved into going into education as a full-time profession. And then as it was pointed out to me, as I was encouraged to move from the classroom into administration, that my sphere of influence and ability to impact more lives was greater as I moved from the classroom to a site administrator position, and then ultimately to a district level superintendent. And then the same progression moving from a district to being able to help lead schools across the county. So it's really deeply rooted in in making a difference in the life. Yeah, that's nice. You know, and I, I know that's that you know, the election process is probably never easy, but when you have the passion, you know, toward the work, you know, you're doing the right thing for kids and your community. So just glad that you uh, made those decisions. And I was a former coach myself, Tim. So I just, I really, I think coaching and what we learned from coaching young people really helps build our leadership skills (laughs) along the way as well. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah. The relationship that you built uh, with your players, um, and then for me, as an agriculture teacher, my FFA kids, it, you know, and still to this day, uh, those students at my school, I started off in a small school, 750 students, and you get to know most all of them. And I've been fortunate enough that some of them now are working for me in this building uh, on the floor that uh, I'm coming to you from. So I get to see them regularly and interact. And, and it's certainly rewarding to see your students be successful adults. It is. It's it's um it's the greatest, you know. So I know that uh, Dr. Greco and others have been working with you from the improvement standpoint. So and you're committed to that. So why has it been important um, to you to build the capacity in your organization to improve? Well, it's been a personal mantra of mine for my entire life: being better today than I was yesterday, and hopefully better tomorrow. I think it's really. From my perspective as the head of the County Office of Education and looked at um, as an example, um, we are a leadership organization, not only for our schools, but we're looked at as a leadership organization throughout our county. And so again, it gets back to what is our purpose? Why do we exist as a County Office of Education? What services are we providing? And it's really the support for districts to provide a better service to their students. Um, And if we look at student achievement data, especially in in our county and in our area, uh, where there's lots of students of poverty and second language learners, we have some areas where there's some real needed improvement. And so 
utilizing the, the systematic approach to improving as an organization not only helps us provide a better service to the educators in our county and our school districts, but also then serves as a model for those districts to implement some systematic approaches to improving outcomes for students. I think that's great because you have that uh, you have that opportunity to not only build a system for yourself, but to really be a model for systems who are who you're supporting. You know, and and um, you know that's the impact that you can make is very broad in that regard. Uh, so really, um, really neat that you're taking the lead on that. You know, I know there's something in particular that that you've done. You've engaged your staff members in sharing feedback about the values, and you've rolled that out and scaffolded that that feedback to staff. Can you share a little bit with us about what you did there with your Friday updates, your video, and to your leaders and departments? I'd love to love to hear it. Sure. Well, you know, my advice has always been to leaders that communication is of the utmost importance. So communicate, 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 and when you think you've communicated, <laughs> you communicate some more. And you know, I've also said to leaders that if you're not checking in with your staff and the people of the group that you're working with on a regular basis, pretty soon you're going to find out that you're just out for a long walk by yourself. Yeah. And so it, it's really important that you're checking in and with technology, with the ability to communicate mass emails, it, it's, it's really easy to do that. There's danger in it too, because you have to make sure that it still has that personal touch, that your communication still comes from the heart and that you're responsive in your communication. If, if you're going to ask for feedback from your staff and, and from the group, the team that you're working with, that they see that you're responding, that their feedback and input um, from time to time, because we all know that in, in our organizations, we can't you know, respond and, and react and change what we're doing based on everyone's input. We'd be all over the place. And we'd That's be right. But it certainly is extremely important, in my opinion, that when you do make adjustments or you do utilize the feedback in a decision, that you call that out and make it public mm -hmm. and let folks know. And so in our process around the, the values of our organization, we, we started with a select group of, of individuals that we thought represented all aspects of our organization. And ask them to start by just identifying what they thought the core values were that currently existed at TCOE. And then we kind of formulated, hey, here's what we think they are based on this representative group. And then we put it back out to all of our 1,500 employees and said, give us your feedback. We did that through a Padlet activity, um, allowed them to make comments on a Padlet. And then also allowed an opportunity through staff meetings, divisions or departments or program meetings, where we specifically scheduled time to review those, the initial draft of the core values and then solicit feedback. And that was brought back. We did a Wordle, which is another technology tool uh, that can grasp the, the number of times that keywords were used in the Padlet. And then we could you know, it groups them and then the size, the larger the size of the word, the more often it appeared in your tablet or the document that you were using to scan. And so we really wanted to then make sure that some of those words got used in the actual core values document. And so then we were able to share, okay, here's what we heard. Here's how we made the adjustments. And then we put the final draft out and then said, you know, this is the draft for this year. This is, this is the final draft for this year. And we'll revisit this as time goes on to see if there are any adjustments that need to be made. And in doing so, it's been extremely well received. And I think that the indicator of how well folks um, received the core values and embraced the process was borne out in the number of people that participated in our most recent pulse check survey. Uh, oh, great. Two thirds of our staff responded in the pulse check survey recently. So those of you who participate in surveys and run surveys know that that's a overwhelmingly good mm -hmm. number of, of participants in a, in a survey response. That's great. You know, it's um, and so I love the what you did and really 
building the engagement. One thing I'm hearing from you, Tim, too, is a common thread is, you know, you're getting feedback, but you're real, really listening to people's feedback and you're using that feedback to build the culture of the organization. So, you know, what, what have you seen or are you seeing as a shift in thinking through this kind of first year of work and on you and your team? And, you know, what, what's, made, what's the shift that's occurring? Well, I think, uh, one, I think we're seeing people really re-engaging, recommitting, if you will, to the reputation, to what we really stand for as a county office of education. We're, we're I think, highly regarded by the state. We've been doing some work across the nation. We've had close relationships with the Gates Foundation and, and been fortunate enough to work with them on multiple occasions on some student achievement work and, and we're engaged in them now. And so I think what's happening is that a larger portion of our organization are really, really getting in touch with our core values, what we stand for, understanding the importance of our reputation and the quality of the service that we provide, and doing so with a rejuvenated level mm -hmm. of commitment and pride. Wonderful. And so that is coming, I think, from including them in the feedback, but also bringing down the walls of the silos that existed in our organization. And really through this feedback loop, getting people to talk across departments, across programs, and realizing that they are so intertwined that they need to be having these conversations uh, they share the same goals, they share similar philosophies and beliefs to the point where we're even working across programs and divisions when we're doing our budgeting now. Yes, so yes. Really, I guess to, to wrap it all up in a nice neat bow, uh, we're really starting to think as a entire system across our organization and not bits and pieces of a system. So as you think about what, I mean, that's incredible as you look back on the last year, just it's the, as you're beginning to see that shift and in and, and engaging people within your organization and your teams, you know, as you look out a year, let's, let's look at a year from now, where do you want to be a year from now based on what you, the great work you've been able to do so far? Uh, well, I think we want to continue down this path of ensuring that people feel comfortable providing feedback and that we have a system in place to honor and recognize that feedback and communicate how it's being used and when it's being used, because I think that's key to continuing the support and really people being fully committed to the mission and the goals of the organization. There are some things that have some processes, I think, that, that I want to continue to, to work on and refine and get better. And, and as, as Studer and Pat would say, hardwire, the, the rounding certainly is, is something that I think is immensely powerful. I'm using it right now as I'm coaching superintendents and um, administrators and districts in our county. The plus delta is making those an absolute part of every meeting that we have at the beginning of the meeting to revisit and address and again, ensure that people are reminded that we're listening mm -hmm. and we hear, the, we hear the feedback and then at the end so that we're prepared to do something and act in between meetings and bring back the results of those plus deltas at the end of the meeting. And then I would love to, to see the participation in our surveys and we're coming up on our end of the year survey, which is a little more comprehensive than the pulse check survey. And we're also gonna have our first external survey where we reach out to our districts that we service, Great. Uh, serve, provide service to. And I'm really looking forward to getting that feedback. And so a year from now, I'm looking forward to taking a look at the baseline data from this year's survey and seeing if we've moved the needle in the right direction uh, based on all the work that we're doing and, and the growth that I'm seeing within our organization, if that manifests itself into a similar or higher rate of participation internally and greater participation and an improved feedback from the districts that we serve. 
That's great. Yeah, that's that good coaching part of you, Tim. You know, it's that, <laughs> I mean, that's the best part of that listening to and, and looking at what people need and seeing where we are and knowing how to adjust along the way. That's what really builds your leadership skills and your probably great ability to be a role model for others. So as we conclude today and, and you continue the work, you know, what advice do you have for leaders who are considering this type of work or just, you know, to help become the best leaders they can for building their teams to achieve results? What's your advice to them? Well, one, it's about prioritizing and understanding and education. I, I grew up in a household my dad taught for 41 years. And when I became an educator, he said to me, he was so proud that I, choosing the profession that he has enjoyed for so long. But he warned me, he said, you know, education is a black hole for time. Make sure that you set a number of hours you're willing to work a week, give it everything you've got, but then at the end of the day, you need to walk away and make sure that your life is balanced. And it's true. And some of the things that I've gathered and picked up from people who have influenced and uh, coached me along the way and mentored me along the way are some, some little sayings that I always try to keep in mind. And I'll share a few of them with you and with you yeah. just because I think it's, it's important. There's always going to be plenty of work to do. Make sure you're doing the right work and understanding the difference between work and the right work. And I think this communication, this cascading of communication, the taking the time to read and listen to the feedback and utilize the feedback and then communicate back out builds the relationships that build commitment to your organization and will make you successful. So that's, that's one is, is make sure that you're taking the time to do the right work. And the right work is making sure that you're taking care of the people in your organization. And the emails are going to be there tomorrow. They're going to be there late tonight. But when you miss opportunities to connect with people, you don't get those back. You know, make, make sure you know what your core values are personally and, a, and as an organization and, and make sure that those line up. If your core values personally don't line up with your organization core values, I think you're headed down a really rocky road. And I would challenge you to, to really evaluate your core values against the core values of your organization and make to make sure that those two are in alignment. And when you do find that, you know, opportunities are endless, your success is going to be great. Your personal happiness is, is going to be even better. You know, your fulfillment of, of job success is going to be great. And people around you sense it and they'll know. And if that piece is missing, it affects your entire organization. So make sure you you put your core values out there and you live them, you're consistent about it, and then it's in, in direct harmony with the core values of your organization. You know, and then be passionate, be bold, be courageous, and be passionate about what you do. It's not easy. No. Um, it isn't easy. As educators, you never arrive. There's never an end product that comes out that's a polished, shiny new Tesla. You, you know, you get that reward. Right. 10 years down the road, when you run into a student and they say, hey, you know, when you told me this in my seventh grade PE class or in my 11th grade history class, it really made an impact on me. Thank you. That's when we get the reward. And that's, that's oftentimes hard for people to, to do because it's hard work and, and you don't see that finished product for years afterwards. You know, we've all chosen this profession, I think, yes. to make a difference to in the lives of kids. It is hard work. It's long hours. And I think that's really what inspires me is not only our kids, but our educators who are, who are giving their lifeblood to do this work. Yeah, I think such great advice. I think for our listeners, just to go back and apply what you've mentioned here would help us tremendously. I take that in myself, Tim. And, you know, I always, as I get an opportunity to connect with people on the podcast, something that always goes in my head is as I'm as I'm connecting with leaders, you know, I always tend to ask myself, gosh, would I like to be a team member who works for that leader? And the answer is definitely yes to you because of the way that you've structured your organization and the passion and the commitment that you have. So I just appreciate your time today and getting to, to know you and hope that in the future we get to connect more. And I know we will yeah, appreciate that's... what you do. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. Thank you for the compliment, too. That's, that's flattering very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. You bet. Tim provides a great example of how leaders connect to their employees and 
build the relationships that focus on care and concern. His model approach to defining the values and moving through that process and engaging people in the process of defining what right looks like in their organization is something that all of us should follow. What I've found is when organizations follow that approach, uh, we find that people understand what the expectations are. They hold themselves accountable and they hold each other accountable. But most important, Tim has really worked to build relationships with the people he works with each and every day and those he serves. He's a model leader for all of us. I so appreciate his dedication, his time, and his care and concern for the work that he does each day to make the lives of our students and their families better. Thank you, Tim, for being with us today. Thank you for tuning in to Accelerate Your Performance. Please share the podcast and make sure you're subscribed. If you're looking for more resources related to today's episode, head over to studereducation.com slash podcast. Tim will be joining us at the West Coast Conference. So come and, and connect with Tim and connect with others at our West Coast Conference. I look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue to focus on the nine principles for organizational excellence so that we can be our best at work. Have a great week, everyone.